In this presentation, we're going to discuss CloudFormation, which lets us codify the entire creation of a stack of resources. A stack, for example, could be an ELB with an auto-scaling group behind it containing EC2 instances, which connect to an RDS database, and all of the connections between them. The benefits of CloudFormation is that it lets you specify your infrastructure as code, and that can be version controlled. There's no more guessing of who did what where in your servers. No more wondering if Joe actually changed something on server X but not server Y. It allows for modularization as templates can contain other templates. So for example, you could set up an entire template just to control your auto-scaling group and the EC2 instances in there, and then include that template in another template which launches your entire infrastructure. This enforces a one way to deploy, making sure that you take out the human factor as much as possible. CloudFormation costs nothing. You're only charged for the resources that it creates. Although this may be your first time hearing about CloudFormation, you may have heard of and or used Chef, Puppet, or CF Engine. These are popular tools that allow you to do the same thing, configuration management of large farms of servers. You can think of CloudFormation as Chef, Puppet, or CF Engine Lite. A whole lot of configuration for these tools is also written in JSON and looks very similar, but there are some cautions. CloudFormation will only work inside of Amazon. Chef, Puppet, and CF Engine will work inside or outside of Amazon, in stacks such as OpenStack. Chef, Puppet, and CF Engine also do a whole lot more stuff. Again, CloudFormation is a sort of subset of what Chef, Puppet, and CF Engine do. Signing up with CloudFormation means that you're signing up with all AWS services that CloudFormation can create. Typically, when you start with AWS, every time you go to use a service, you're asked to confirm that you understand the billing. When you accept that you're going to use CloudFormation with AWS, you're also accepting all the terms of all of the services that it can create. One thing you'll definitely want to do with CloudFormation is set up billing alarms. There are two to 300 templates readily available from Amazon to launch stacks like Drupal, WordPress, and so on. And these can fast track development and exploration with AWS. You can spin up an entire stack and actually see how the services interconnect and work with each other. So for example, if you wanted to learn how to work with queues, you could spin up a stack that's using a queue and then go in and see how Amazon configured it. Definitely set up billing alarms, but if you're going to go on from this point and use CloudFormation for anything, you want to create a billing alarm. Here we've set up a billing alarm that's going to send mail to myself every time that our AWS service charges total exceed $10. This is one of the first things I did when I set up our account. You can go to this URL down below to learn how to do this. CloudFormation also includes something called CloudFormer. This lets you create a template from a running stack of resources. For example, if you already spun up an entire stack with an ELB, auto scaling group, EC2 instances, and an RDS database, you can use CloudFormer to create a template of that stack. CloudFormer requires that you spin up another EC2 instance with the CloudFormer application running on it. Then you go through and check the resources in your infrastructure that you want to include in the template. CloudFormer is still in beta and it is quite buggy, but I think it could be a great product eventually. Continue checking back with AWS to see how it evolves. The first thing you need to know about CloudFormation is that the templates are JSON based. Templates can also accept runtime parameters. These are things that you may want to change every time you launch the infrastructure. An example could be instance type, using small for test, but large for deploy, a key pair with production versus test. Templates can also update a running stack, but this may bounce or restart some resources. Be careful with production resources, as it could result in some users getting 404s. Templates also have light functionality to do stuff like variable replacement and loops. CloudFormations have seven sections you should be familiar with. The version of CloudFormation that you're using, the description, which provides human-readable, detailed information about the template itself, any runtime parameters that you may want to override from individual runs of the template, the mappings, which are enumerated lists, the resources, which are the actual AWS resources you're going to create, and the properties, the resource specifics themselves. Finally, we have outputs, which are the final output of the template. Let's first look at parameters. Parameters are things such as key name, site name, email, and so forth that you may want to change from individual runs of the template. 
These parameters are exposed in the web GUI when you go to run the template, and you can override any of them. Mappings are great for instance types, AMI lists, and so forth. They allow you to specify in short human-readable terms various parameters. Resources specify the actual resources that you'll create. Underneath resources, we also have properties, the properties of the resource themselves. Here you can see that we're creating an S3 bucket whose properties specify not only the version, but an additional policy statement to control IAM policies. These are essentially the meat, and the properties are going to vary from service to service. At the very end of a template, we should specify outputs. Templates can be consumed programmatically, and a common practice is to have the ELB entry point or DNS name as the output. If we did this, for example, a testing script could then run the template, grab the ELB from the outputs itself, and then start testing against the ELB to do things like load tests. A great benefit of CloudFormation is the template marketplace. Amazon offers many types of prepackaged templates. You can go to this URL to browse the two to 300 templates that Amazon currently offers. This is a great way to get started quickly. And we actually use the three-tiered Drupal template to build a web app in the building a three-tier scalable web architecture in the cloud exercise. CloudFormation is a great way to POC, or proof of concept, Amazon services and features. If you want to get familiar with how a service works, it's a really good practice to spin up a template and see how Amazon configured it. You can also use this to proof of concept individual software, such as Drupal, WordPress, Redmine, and so forth. It's very useful to spin up dev and test environments and then tear them back down. CloudFormation allows one button deploy and one button removal. So you simply push delete template and it will remove all resources that were created. It's also excellent for testing, with the particularly good template being bees with machine guns, which spins up a bunch of T1 micros that are used to load test your application. Some things to be careful of inside of CloudFormation. I think it's great for initial deploy, but it's not so great for updating the stack. The rules of what gets restarted or bounced are complicated, and it's not a good idea for production. This could, however, change in the future. For stack updates, highly recommend getting used to and familiar with the API and command line tools. Chef, Puppet, and CF Engine are better all around, but they're a lot more complicated. In this exercise, we learned all about CloudFormation, how it lets you codify and version an entire stack of resources, how it's great for deployments, but maybe not so great for maintenance, what the seven sections are, and how it compares to Chef, Puppet, and CF Engine.